In August of 2000, I moved with my family to Arkansas to work for the Winthrop Rockefeller Foundation. I came to work directly with Dr. Sybil Jordan Hampton, an unassuming but engaging civil rights warrior who was the first person of color to graduate from Little Rock Central High School after attending there for all three senior high school years. I grew up in the civil rights era and had become familiar with the famous photograph of Governor Rockefeller standing on the Capitol steps holding hands with African American community leaders after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I was excited to be joining an organization with such a compelling legacy and mission and to make Arkansas our home. When we moved to Arkansas, my oldest daughter, Michelle, was 10. She attended public school in our West Little Rock neighborhood, just two blocks away. On one of our first evening strolls around the neighborhood, she asked me, Mom, why do none of the white girls and the black girls sit together at lunch? If I eat lunch with one of my black friends, then none of the white girls will sit near me. I just don't get it. This was a new experience for her because she had been in a racially integrated school in Baltimore where that wasn't the case. I struggled to give her an answer that made sense because the truth is, prejudice doesn't make sense. As a mom, I was intensely proud that she was willing to make friends across the clear personal biases in her new community. Ten years later, I was hosting an exchange student and she encountered the same issues Michelle had. Katrina easily made friends with girls from all different backgrounds, but quickly learned she couldn't hang out with them together. Racial prejudice was new and baffling to her. She heard things like it's dangerous to walk in downtown Little Rock, and if she visited certain friends in their homes, she was in unsafe areas. Her question was, why? She could easily see how different this was from the community she grew up in, in Denmark and she could see that some students had opportunities and others had doors closed to them. When you're from somewhere else, it's easy to see inequity. Systems that work only for a few, hidden assumptions that close doors on opportunity, and even more toxic, the belief that these barriers don't exist. Is that really the Arkansas we want to live in? I do this work because I am past tired of that question and that reality. I am ready for the Arkansas the governor envisioned and Sybil Hampton returned to build. The Arkansas where any child can sit wherever they want, where every neighborhood is desirable, and every family has family supporting wages. The Winthrop Rockefeller Foundation is ready too. We are tired of tweaking the status quo and we have pivoted to relentlessly pursuing equity. We are daring to dream of a different Arkansas. And I am eager for the Arkansas where systemic barriers, personal biases, and legacies of unfairness are a thing of the past.